Ciao tutti. My name is Juanita Joseph and I'm here in Naples, Italy. And right now I'm speaking on behalf of the women's ministry here at the Hallelujah Gospel Service Ministry. And we've put together some oh, yummy recipes for those of us who are not able to meet up with family during this time, during this uh, pandemic, we're not able to meet together with family and especially families who are overseas, who are so far away from their families. And uh, maybe they're looking for some of their uh, recipes that their grandmother or mother um, normally fix every Thanksgiving or Christmas. Well, we have some for you, so check this video out. I'm gonna have Linda to explain more about what we're doing. Buongiorno a tutti. My name is Linda and I'm coming to you from Hallelujah Gospel Women's Ministries here in Naples, Italy. We know the holidays are fast approaching and many of you in our living abroad community are away from home, missing family, friends, and loved ones. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to get together and bring you a little taste of home for the holidays. We're gonna be sharing some of our favorite home-cooked family recipes with you. We hope you enjoy them. Let's get started. For our homemade cranberry sauce, let's go over a list of ingredients. You'll need 12 ounces of fresh cranberries, three quarter cup of sugar, half a cup of orange juice, half a cup of water, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a small piece of orange rind, and a pinch of salt. Okay, I've lit my stove to medium high heat and I have a medium sized saucepan. To my saucepan, I will add the water, the orange juice, and the sugar. Then we'll give it a quick stir. Then we will add cranberries and our remaining ingredients. The cinnamon, a pinch of salt, and the orange rind. And now we're gonna let it simmer, come to a slow boil, and you'll see the cranberries begin to pop open. Okay, we've been simmering for about 10 minutes, and now you see that all the cranberries have popped and it has thickened all on its own. And we're done. Now we're gonna transfer it to a serving dish to cool off and enjoy. You can either store it in the refrigerator for up to three days or you can let it cool off and serve it right away. Voila, folks. The cranberry sauce is set and cooled and garnished and ready for table. Enjoy. Hey, we are going to be making a green bean casserole today for Thanksgiving. Um, the ingredients that you're gonna need for this is pretty simple. It's just gonna be two cans of green beans drained, one can of your condensed cream of mushroom, one can and this is considered a can, of um, the French fried onions, and this is six ounces. And then you're gonna do one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I do the mild. And you just begin by draining your um, green beans. And once you've drained them, you place those and your cream of mushroom into a microwave safe bowl as I did here. You stir it up pretty good and you cook it on high for three to five minutes. And then you are going to take that cup of shredded cheese and you're gonna take half of the shredded cheese and pour it in, mix it together, put it back in the microwave for two to three minutes. From there, you will get this concoction with your somewhat melted cheese all good in there. And then this is a microwave safe dish and I'm also gonna throw it into the oven for the finished product. But for the finished, you're gonna transfer 
um, these into a casserole dish if it's not already in one. You're gonna sprinkle a cup of these. And I'm not gonna do a whole cup just because I did a smaller, um, I did a smaller one. We're just gonna do about three fourths. And then you're gonna dump that other half of shredded cheese that I talked about um, in your concoction. All right. And then you just place it in the oven, 350 degrees and you pretty much just bake it until the cheese is all nice and melted and the onions are browned. So I'm going to place this in the oven. All right, and I also added in the beginning, you can do salt and pepper just to taste, so no particular measurement, just kind of sprinkle it in there. Um, when you get it out of the microwave and mix it up. But that is your very simple, very easy green bean casserole for Thanksgiving. Thanks. For this recipe, we're making the broccoli cauliflower salad. And I'm using the recipe from one of the cookbooks that uh, one of my churches put together, that we put together back in 2006 from the Lord's Table. So this is one of my old recipes. I may have changed a few um, ingredients, but this is the recipe book I'm gonna be using and you will get the recipe for this um, broccoli cauliflower salad. And these are the ingredients that we're gonna be using here. And of course, we're gonna use the broccoli. A broccoli, I'll let you know uh, how many cups or whatever uh, the next in a few minutes and uh, cauliflower we're going to use cauliflower we're going to use um, celery red onion and in this salad i use um, cranberries or either raisins so and it's not in the recipe but i will add it to the recipe cranberries and we, you can use either um, the white vinegar, distilled vinegar, or you can use the apple cider vinegar. I normally use the apple cider vinegar. And also for a little flavor, you can put in the cheese. This is vegan cheese and maple syrup. The re all the recipes you find for the broccoli cauliflower salad, it's gonna ask for white sugar, but I normally use a little um, maple syrup for the sweetness. And also I used mayo and vegan mayo. And also I add a few nuts in there. I'll put um, either pecans, pecan pieces, or I'll use walnut. So make it a little more crunchier, crunchier. Okay, now that we have everything all chopped up here, we got the broccoli, the cauliflower, and the onions and celery all chopped up. And um, so what we did here, as far as how much we put in the salad, is two cups of broccoli, two cups of cauliflower. Uh, let's see, this is a fourth cup of red onions, a fourth, that's a third cup of celery. But you can put how much you want to put in, depending on how much onion you like. But I don't like a lot of onions in my salad. And um, there's a half cup of uh, grated cheese. And then we got a, a half cup of nuts. Most people put a whole, one, one whole cup. And some people put bacon, but I just went and put, um, I told you earlier, raisin or cranberries. So it's like about a third cup of cranberries. And this is a mixture here of this. If you're gonna put sugar, uh, sugar, vinegar, and mayonnaise, so this is like uh, a half cup of mayonnaise. Uh, let's see, I only put like two tablespoons, if not if that much, of uh, maple syrup and about, uh, I think it was like a fourth cup of vinegar. And you mix this together. Okay, first you're gonna put all the other ingredients in before you put the wet ingredients. This in together, mix it in together, all together. 
Okay, then we should mix that. This is always a family's favorite here. Probably need a bigger bowl, but I'll see if this will work. Okay, then you pour in the wet ingredients, which I probably need more. But if that's the case, I'll add more mixture. And you probably will find that you may need more wet ingredients. Then you mix it together, depending on how wet you want it. And I must say that if you, um, when you make this salad, if you leave it in the fridge, it's, you know, vegetables has a lot of water. So you'll notice, uh, you will notice that it's going to, um, you'll start having a, more water. It's going to be more, it's going to liquefy more. You have more liquid as it sits. But after you make it, this is, you see that, how it's coming together. See the cheese, the grated cheese. You can see the nuts. You can see the raisins. I think it's a mixture of raisin and cranberries. I think I mixed it. And um, let's see, broccoli, cauliflower. Beautiful, beautiful color. And it smells good too. That vinegar. So we'll do a taste test. Now first I gotta put it in a bowl. Let me put a little bit more. This mixture that I think is perfect. Perfectly measured, but like I say, you may have more liquids if it sit longer in the fridge. But after you make this, let me put it in a bowl. Put it in your serving bowl. You see how beautiful. So I will let my photographer taste it in a little bit and he can give you an okay how it turns out but I'm gonna taste it myself as well but this is it Let's see. It's my towel <laughs> but this is it the broccoli cauliflower salad and I'm ready to taste it I know it's yummy it always turns out pretty good. So this is it. I hope you try it. That's it. Okay, the next recipe, we are gonna use the same cookbook. It's gonna be, we're gonna be making the sweet potato casserole. And these are all the ingredients that we're gonna be using for the sweet potato casserole. Oops, right there. Okay, of course, we're gonna need the sweet potatoes. And what I do is I bake the sweet potatoes for like an hour, maybe an hour, 10 minutes. And just, I bake them whole to keep in that sweetness. That is how you, you don't have to put so much sugar in it. If you bake them in the, in the skin, with the skin on, and that keeps all that good old flavor in your potato. You don't waste your flavor. Okay, the sweet potatoes, of course. And then you're gonna need some, um, Let's see, margarine. It's a margarine, stick of margarine. I use this um, butter here, plant-based butter. And um, you're gonna need some milk. So I use soy milk or almond milk or whatever. You're gonna need some, um, it calls for white sugar. And again, I'm gonna use the maple syrup. And it calls for vanilla. So a little bit of vanilla. Use vanilla and um, cinnamon. I'm gonna use some cinnamon. Just a dash of salt. And uh, well, this is cinnamon. And also, I may put a little nutmeg. I'm gonna try putting maybe, uh, uh, let's say, a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg to get that good flavor. 
and that is going to be the the potato mixture and then for the topping we're going to use I'm going to use this all-purpose flour brown sugar I'm going to use the brown sugar and um, margarine this is not a, a healthy plant-based meal here <laughs> and we're going to use pecans for the topping we're going to mix all that together you can either use the whole pecans or you just make strips of uh, whole pecans on the top of your potato mixture or you can use the um, pecan pieces so you'll see how it turns out and also I forgot we need um, a binder for the potato sweet potato mixture so most of the recipe most of the recipes will ask for egg as a binder um, I don't use egg but this is if you want to use eggs it'll be in the recipe as well this is what my husband uses for breakfast sometimes he likes eggs and I use a flaxseed for and this is a this is a mixture of flaxseed and chia seeds but I use flax seeds so I use that uh, for one egg I'll use um, one tablespoon of flax seed and three tablespoons of water to get that um, to get to make that binder you let it sit for a little bit but for two eggs you'll use you'll double that so that is what we're going to be using in this recipe okay now we're going to put the um, sweet potato casserole together and these are all the ingredients here first I've already mixed together the binder for the uh, with the sweet potatoes like I say you can use egg or either uh, you can use um, uh, flax seed flax seed meal and like I say for the, the binder for the flax seed you use one tablespoon of flax seed meal and three tablespoons of water and you can double it if you need two eggs but one egg is one tablespoon of flax seed two three um, <laughs> tablespoons of water and let it sit for a little bit and then you put it in your mixture or whatever so that's already inside here and next we're going to add the milk and this is like three three quarter cups of milk whatever milk you want whether you want dairy milk or non-dairy this is um soy milk uh, whatever milk you like so you mix that together and then i'm going to add in the um let's see what's next butter in I put the butter in here margarine okay it's like a half uh, uh, what I say one-fourth cup of margarine gonna mix that together it's folded in And then we're gonna mix some, let's see what's next. I probably should have put the, um, I do like a lot of cinnamon. So I'm gonna put like a tablespoon almost of cinnamon. Guys, I like it. I like cinnamon. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little nutmeg. It's gonna be like only about a fourth this is very strong nutmeg is very strong but it has a good flavor if you put just enough just enough of um nutmeg this is a good flavor okay that's the nutmeg and then we're going to put in some cinnamon i want to put in maybe a teaspoon of cinnamon oh this is not cinnamon this is vanilla <laughs> <laughs> this is vanilla I just put the cinnamon in okay we're gonna put a teaspoon of uh, uh, vanilla that's a half okay I'm trying to get my attention <laughs> okay I put a little bit more get that vanilla flavor okay and then see that that's that's done and this, if you're going to add sugar, some people add white sugar. This is just like a fourth uh, cup of maple syrup. Let's say rather than putting sugar, I use maple syrup. 
mix that in fold it in together I used a mixer to mix the potatoes earlier but I'm just gonna fold this in Get it all together Smelling that cinnamon. I think that's it. Oh, then a little bit of salt. A little salt to bring the flavors together. Okay. Okay. Uh, last the mixture there well, I guess I can leave this in here not leave it there and next we're gonna mix the topping okay for the topping over here gonna mix the topping and okay we start off with uh, the butter I don't like to use a lot of butter which is that probably is a lot the butter and pecans I did a whole cup of pecans because this is probably going to be pretty big pecans and then you add your um, flour Oops. And brown sugar so now I'm gonna move over here and get the brown sugar a half cup of brown sugar so you're gonna mix it all together like I say I put the gloves on for that reason you can use a spoon or you can use your hands. This is the topping. Oops. You mix all that butter, that brown sugar, and the pecans together and the flour. Mix it all together. And you're gonna sprinkle it on top of the, um, the potato mixture. I have to get the um, casserole dish so you can. So next, you put it in a casserole dish. Okay. Okay, next, we're gonna pour the mixture into casserole dish. This uh, nine by thirteen. I don't think I said how many how many, how many cups of potatoes, but I think it was this was three cups. I really didn't measure it, but. And like I always tell my guest, <laughs> my kitchen, my rules. <laughs> mm, so I might make them up as I go. Did you see that? <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna put our topping on. Throw my towel away. So then we're gonna add this on the top.
Boy, I'm acting like a real cook here. You would think I was a real cook. Huh, Jay? <laughs> yeah, man. Anyway, it's gonna spread all over once once it um bakes in the oven. Get that evenly spread, spread over the um potato mixture. And how beautiful, beautiful is that? Every little crumb. Okay, and off to the oven. And you put it in the oven for 30 minutes to maybe 40 minutes, uh, 350 degrees, and it should be ready. And this is the sweet potato casserole. And this is another family favorite. This is what my family have me cook every year because they know I'm not the cook. So usually a salad or the sweet potato casserole. And that is all. But since we're not going to be home with family this year, this is for my family in Mississippi, Texas, Florida, and everywhere else, Chicago. This is for you guys. <laughs> okay. So now we have the finished product. So here we have the broccoli cauliflower salad, and we have the sweet potato casserole. <laughs> you gotta try it, it's really good. Well, hello everyone. I'm gonna show you how I make collard greens. You can see I have a stack a beautiful collard green leaves. I stack one on top of the other. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll them so I can cut them and so that I can put them in the pan. As I have the nice green leaves stacked, I'm going to roll them so that I can cut them all at the same time with a really sharp knife. And this is just a regular platter. And I cut them about an inch apart. And what this does is when I put them in the water, boiling water, it's gonna make them so uh, already cut and bite-sized. Okay. And as you see, I'm just gonna stick these on the side. And I, if, as your roll gets a little loose, you just tighten it. Okay. You can stop. So I need to put now I'm just placing these in the pot. And I'm basically going to fill it up with water and add just table salt to kind of just uh, rinse them off. Now, um, it's a lot of salt, but actually it'll just uh, rinse off. It's just a way of cleaning the collards. Hello, my name is Pam and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Virginia candied yams. So I'm starting with uh, these uh, medium to large sweet potatoes and for sake of the recipe I'm only going to cook three but normally for the holidays I cook eight and I make a big pan and freeze them. But anyway, what I'm going to do is here are my three already in the pan. And the reason I want to show you is some hints. So when I get the potatoes, they have a lot of dirt on them. I always, under the water, I scrub them off real good with a wet paper towel. Rinse them really, really good. 
and I the pan just an ordinary pan I place them I usually place them on the side because I usually use a bigger boiler and I just place them like dominoes in the pan so that when I stand them up they don't lay flat they can lay flat if you're only doing one or two but you really have to watch them because they'll overcook so anyway I stand them up like soldiers and I'm going to bring the water to about an inch of the pan and I cook them without a lid for about uh, 50 minutes to an hour and I will be back and tell you the hint. Oh, one thing you want to make sure, absolutely sure, that you use a regular fork and pierce the skin. If the fork goes in without resistance, they are time to take out. So probably after about 30 minutes of cooking, depending on the, some potatoes are long and skinnier and they cook quicker. These are thick, so it's probably gonna take about 40 minutes of boiling. And I'll stick the fork in. When I can stick it in, I don't want these mushy, so you don't want them where you can squeeze the potato and it's still, uh, you know, it's so soft. No, you still want it to have some tautness to it. So when you peel it, once the skin, the skin will start to be loose around the cooked potato, and we call them jackets and you will take a knife or a fork and you can split the skin and just pull it right off. I will show you how to do that in the next uh, section of the video. But right now I'm just boiling them for uh, about 40 minutes to an hour. Depending on how many potatoes you have and you do after 30 minutes, you want to start checking every 10 minutes to stick your fork in to make sure they don't overcook. It's better for them to undercook than to overcook because you cannot uh, make your candy yams with mush. So anyway, let me put these on the stove and I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, so this is part two. Uh, I don't know if you can see the yams are smoking. Uh, basically, I have boiled them for about 50 minutes. And so what I call the jackets or the skins, I'm going to take a sharp knife. Or you can use a fork and I'm gonna cut off the ends so like that just the tip and do the same thing on the other side and you just have to be really careful because they're hot now this is the part i hope you can see i'm gonna take my knife up under the skin we call it the jackets and you'll see that it'll just start coming off real easy from the boiling and oops it's hot and and it'll be like a paler skin than inside the yam so you want to just carefully take that off okay and once you get it from one side you just turn it and it's hot and the skin, skin comes off in one big piece that's just my timer <laughs> one hour And so you just carefully take all of the skin off. And I will get a baking tray. Just a baking tray. I'm just going to sit them in, what I'm going to cook them in. You can use metal or you can use glass. It doesn't matter. Both cook well. And if you don't own a, a like a baking dish, you can buy those aluminum pans. But definitely double them because 
you don't want the juices to once you try to take it out the pan it it all spill so I've completely it's almost too hot to hold the reason you want to take them out when they're hot because it makes it really easy to take off the skins so whoops I'm just gonna you can see it's completely just the bright orange yam skin and I take all this extra uh, skin that came off the potato and the ends I just put it in a bag to put it in the trash so let me get a bag For the trash. Oh, I'll get it after. Okay. So now let me peel the other one. So you can see the skin. So I'm just basically taking the knife up under, and you see how easy the skins will come off. Okay. And I just, the, the skin just, it, it's loose, so it just lifts right away from the potato. You have a few little eyes, and I just uh, take with the sharp knife, I just take those off. So that your potato is completely just all orange. Take the little eyes off. And sometimes you have little uh, buds, you just cut those off. And see how the skin comes, it's so cooked, it just comes off in one piece. You're going to throw all that away. Okay. So I'm just getting the little, small little eyes, and they're just on the surface of the skin. Okay. All right. I have one more potato to skin. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause the video while I do the third one okay and so now I have two and I'm gonna do one more um, potato let's see if I can get it Ooh, it's so hot let me get a um, sometimes I use a big spoon to lift it up out of the water so that uh, it doesn't burn you because you do want to get them while it's hot so I take the spoon to support underneath of the big potato Woo! and just now I'm done and I'm gonna cut this last one and then I'm gonna show you how I season to taste so once again I cut off the end with a sharp knife on both ends and it will burn your tips of your fingers so you have to take your time to lift up underneath and it just comes right off okay okay Okay, I'm back. This is the last step before they go into the oven. So I'm going to share with you these two first. I spread them out. You will need a sharp knife to make your little silver dollars. Oh, oh yeah, it's working. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes you will get uh, these little sprouts on the potato. You just gently pull them out so they don't take much of your potato. You don't want that. And I just double check to make sure there's no skin on the potato because you don't want to have your sweet potatoes baked and you have extra skin on there. So they're pretty clean. So let me rinse my hands off real quick. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is slice the potato. So I do about a half of an a inch. And that's what makes the silver dollar appearance. About half inch slices. Okay. 
Can you see? Oh, the other one crashed, crashed in. That's how I do it. Okay, and I have a third one, third potato. I wanted to show you this third potato has, uh, the reason that this is on the end, sometimes your potatoes uh, are sticking a little bit out the water, and since you want all the uh, cook pieces to be consistent, I will cut that off because it is it, it, it didn't quite uh, cook. So I'm just going to toss that. And on the other end, because you want uh, it to, and this was the end. I didn't cut it quite uh, deep enough because you can see that some of the end is not quite uh, smooth. So I'm just going to cut that off. So when you buy your potatoes for the holidays, you should have one extra so that you can throw away the ends and you still have enough for a full dish. So I've checked this one now to make sure that there's no skin, there's no extra skin. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. All of my potatoes are about half inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do, every, oops, got to answer the doorbell. Uh -huh. oh, hello, everyone. My uh, yams are done. They cooked for about an hour and 10 minutes. It's really uh, hard to overcook them. Basically, uh, I'm just taking this, um, oh, I forgot what you call this. Um, but um, anyway, I'm basically uh, sucking up the melted uh, butter, sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg over top, kind of like just uh, basing the yams with the syrup mixture, and that's it. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Hi. I'm Carolita Henry, and today I'm going to be teaching you all how I make my macaroni and cheese. So, let me show you my ingredient list. So, I have them arranged in the order that I will proceed in putting this product together. So, the first thing we're going to need is macaroni noodles. And I like to put oil, olive oil and salt inside of my water to give my noodles a nice flavor because as they cook they will absorb that salt and um, it gives your, your noodles a nice little flavor so that they're not really bland. Then we're going to move on to making a roux and it's going to be equal um, parts butter and flour. Okay, I opted to go with salted butter um, and it, that's your decision whether you want to use salted or unsalted. Then we'll move, once we get that roux made, we're going to move towards um, putting the cheese and butter into that roux and making our cheese sauce. And then from there, we'll add a little bit of mustard to, to your liking. If you want, you can admit that. Um, I like it because it gives it a nice little kick. And then, of course, you're going to add salt and pepper to your desired taste. And then um, I always like to put a breadcrumb um, mixture on the top of my uh, mac and cheese. So once it's baking, it can have a nice little crust on the top. So that's the ingredient list. And we will move on to the next step. Now we're going to make our roux. And we're going to do equal parts of butter and flour. And it all just depends on how much 
you're planning on preparing, how many servings you're going to prepare. So we're going to get this melted. And now we're going to add our flour. And then we're just going to stir it in there until it gets to the color of your liking. You want to kind of cook that flour out. And the darker it is, the more nuttier the flavor is going to be. But you don't want it to be too dark because then you're going to burn it. And I like it in the way it looks right there. Now I'm going to add some milk to that roux. And I like to have a whisk nearby, but first I'm just going to get all that. And then just let it do its thing. Yeah. It's starting to come together there. Your heat, make sure your heat is on low, or you could even turn it, turn it off because the pan is still going to be warm. And see, there we go. A nice, pretty, non lumpy roux here and then of course we're going to add more milk. So now the roux has thickened up nicely and this is the consistency that I would like my cheese sauce to be at so I'm going to start adding the cheese. Alright, now the cheese is in there and you just stir it up and stir it in there until that cheese melts and like that. Now I'm going to add in a little bit of mustard and then the salt and the pepper. And you're going to want to add that to your taste. All right, now I've added in the mustard, salt, and the pepper to my desired taste. That's the consistency of the cheese sauce. And now we're going to move on to the next step. Really easy. We're going to put in our noodles when the water is nice and hot boiling just like so. We're going to boil our noodles until they're al dente, which means where they have a bit of a bite to them, but you still get your tube all the way through. So they're cooked, but they're just at that right perfect point. All right, we add our noodles in there. I'm just going to stir them around so they don't stick together. And then let the water do its thing. All right, so now our noodles are done. And our cheese sauce is ready, so we're just going to pour it and mix it together. Alright, let's mix together nicely. Now for your crust for the top, we're going to melt butter, then add some breadcrumbs to it, and then just sprinkle it on the top. As you can see, I've added the breadcrumbs to the top. And then we're going to let bake until it gets nice and brown, golden brown, and beautiful. And here's our finished product. Buon appetito! Hello, I'm Carolita Henry, and I'm going to be showing you how to make Polish Kalashki cookies. They're perfect for the holidays. So step one is going to be deciding what we're going to use as a filling. And I'm going to use an apricot jam filling. And so we're going to make some apricot jam. And you're going to need these three items in order to make that product. So I'm using some dried apricots. And I used about five bags because of the amount of cookies that I'm going to be making. And I just took some water, put it in a bowl, and soaked it overnight. Now we have this. So here are our apricots that have been soaking overnight. We're going to add more water to this. We're going to cover it. Then we're going to let it boil for about 25 minutes. And then we're going to add some sugar. Voila. So while we're waiting on our apricot jam, and we're going to start working on our dough. So we're going to need three cups of flour, one and a half cups of 
room temperature butter, salted or unsalted, um, it's your choice, and room temperature cream cheese, Philadelphia cream cheese is my favorite. And that's all you're gonna need for the so dough. Now we put all our butter, three sticks, in there. So we're gonna let that blend up nicely. And that was easy because it was at room now temp. We've got our cream cheese in there. And we're going to let those combine together. And again, because it was at room temp, it's gonna move back with this taco. Now we're gonna add our flour, one cup at a time. Slowly and just continue to add it in there like so, one cup at a time. And now I can see that the dough looks really good. All the ingredients have combined the butter, the cream cheese, and the flour. I'm gonna let it spin one more time after I get some of this cream cheese off of the whisk here. And then we'll move to the next step. Okay, now remember, we're letting our apricots boil while we're doing our flour, if you decide to make your own jam. And you can opt to use jam that's already done, pie filling that's already done. I wanted to take a moment to show you what the apricots need to be looking like before we apply and add our sugar. So here we go. Our apricots are boiling nicely. They've been rehydrated and they are screaming for some sugar. I'm gonna add four cups of sugar to this. I'm just gonna stir that sugar in nicely. I'm gonna continue to stir that in there until you feel that it is dissolved. And then you're going to let that sugar reduce down and get all that goodness, every bit of that goodness out of there. And back to our dough. And this is what your dough should look like. It's very much so blended well. Now you're gonna wanna have a nice large piece of parchment paper because this is some very sticky dough. We are going to put the dough on the parchment paper. We're gonna fold that parchment paper in half with the dough in the middle. And then we are going to press it and we're gonna get a rolling pin and get it evenly distributed out. Now, the magic of TV. I've already done two batches, and this is where I'm at, because after you have rolled that out, you're gonna wanna put that in the refrigerator at least for one hour and let it chill, or for overnight. And I have let mine stay overnight. All right, I'm happy with the way this looks and how it's reduced down and how that, how that sugar has combined nicely. Now it's time for the food process. Okay, we have removed all of the apricots. We've got a food processor, or I've got a food processor, and I'm blessed enough to have a Vitamix. So whichever one you have will work, but you're gonna to want to put them in the device and blend them down, and I'll show you that as soon as I do it. All right, and we've got our Vitamix. We're gonna turn it on the level we want it to go to. And that looks good. I love the Vitamix. All right. And that's what the finished product is gonna look like, guys. This is perfect. It's nice and thick for the cookies. And this will allow the jam to hold nicely when it's baking. So we'll move on to the food processor and it'll be able to give us that same consistency. 
and I did pump it about three to four times in the food processor and here we go it's about the same consistency I don't mind there being a little bit of variation in the texture because I think it gives it a little bit of personality and it's just fine so I've added the batch that was in the food processor the one that's a little bit thicker in texture back into that leftover syrup that we had that reduced down apricot and sugar that we had put in there and it got had a nice boil and it reduced down and I'm putting it in here I'm actually going to use this um, batch for a tart and I'm going to use this batch that I use um, that I did in the Vitamix for the cookies so there are several different things many different things actually that you can do with um, this product once you've made it so if you make a, a little bit more than you actually need for the cookies that's perfect because it could be a jam to put on bread or like I said um, you can add it to another dessert Later. So after your dough has chilled for at least one hour, you're going to want to make sure that it has been rolled out to a, about one fourth inch thick, okay? And you also want to make sure that you have a pan that is lined with parchment paper or if you have like a silicone mat, that would also be perfect make sure that you go ahead at this point and turn your oven on to 350 so that it will be ready to cook your bake your cookies when you have moved on to the final step at this point you're going to want to take a little bit of confectioner sugar and put it on top of the dough and use that as a barrier between the dough and the rolling pin so that the rolling pin doesn't stick to the dough and i cut them into squares like so then you want to put a dollop of the uh, jam preserves on to the square and then you want to just pinch it together like so. And when you're done we will place it in the oven. And here we have our finished product. You want to let it bake for about 15 minutes until it starts to get nice and golden brown. You can also gauge where you're at by looking at the bottom of the cookie there. And that to me is just a perfect place to go ahead and take it out. You can omit dusting it with powdered sugar, but I think it gives it a nice presentation look plus a little bit of extra sweetness. I have a sweet tooth, so I think that's perfect. And um, this, this cookie is really light and fluffy. The apricot filling in the middle just really gives you that sweetness that you desire, but the crust is just delightful. And the cream cheese, you can definitely tell it's in there. This is a great cookie for the holiday and I hope you enjoy. Bon appetito. Okay everybody, now we're gonna show you how to make homemade pumpkin pie. First, let's start with the ingredients. We've got one and a half cups of canned pumpkin, one cup of whole milk, half a cup of pure maple syrup, two large eggs, we have half a teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of flour, one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ginger, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. And of course, we have the crust. Let's get started. Okay, I've added all the dry ingredients into a small bowl, and I'm just mixing them together with a whisk, and we're going to set that aside for later. Okay, I've added my two large eggs to a large bowl and I'm going to beat them until well mixed. Okay, there you have the eggs well beaten. Next we're going to add all the wet ingredients. Got my vanilla, 
my half a cup of pure maple syrup. And the pumpkin. Okay, I scraped the rest of that pumpkin into this large mixing bowl, and now I'm blending it all together. And now we're going to add the milk in gradually, little by little. Mix that together. Continue adding gradually until it's all mixed together. Okay, to my well-mixed pumpkin batter, I've added the dry ingredients from the small bowl. And now I'm mixing it all together until it's well blended. Okay, and now you see everything is uniform and well blended. Now we're ready to pour it into the pumpkin pie shell. Okay, we've got all the pumpkin pie batter into the uncooked pie crust. And now we're ready to pop it into a 350 degree preheated oven for approximately 55 to 60 minutes. You'll want to wait until a butter knife inserted into the middle comes out clean. See you soon. Okay everybody, I just pulled out my pumpkin pie from the oven and it smells delicious. A thing of beauty. Enjoy!